Hello, I'm Patrice Lazareff. I'm a music mixing engineer at Studio Le Manoir in France and today I will show you how to set up the Dolby Atmos renderer in order to use it with Reaper because there is a common misbelief that this solution is only aimed at Pro Tools or Nuendo users but the Dolby Atmos renderer can do much more than that and we can use it without any problem with Reaper. Uh, and I will show you how. The first thing you have to know is that you will need for that for the moment, I will show it with a Mac computer um, because I will explain uh, why this is only available for the Mac for the moment because the idea is to use both the Reaper and the Dolby Atmos renderer on the same machine. Uh, another common misbelief is that this machine does not have to be the latest Mac Pro. Uh, I will be using the previous version of the Mac Pro, known as the trash can, but I got from a reliable source that it's also working very well with a Mac Mini. And another thing that if you want to have a go and try it, uh, you don't need to have uh, a preferred listening environment, which is um, comprised of at least uh, 11 speakers and a subwoofer known as 7.1.4. Actually, Dolby recommends uh, the standard is 7.1.2. Um, but um, companies such as Netflix, which, uh, by the way, uh, gives away and allows you to access to some content in open source uh, to in order to try things uh, it's a good thing to download that to have it go but if you have only a stereo environment it will work as well of course you won't get the whole benefit of the experience but at least you will try in stereo and if you have headphones uh, which is very likely uh, you can also try the binaural uh, version so in any case Try it, give it a go. If you're interested in immersive audio, uh, it's a good thing to try. And the first thing you will have to do, uh, uh, and you will also need an iLock dongle, uh, because the Dolby Atmos production suite uh, uh, needs it to be authorized, and you can get a free trial for 30 days, um, but you have to have an iLock dongle. So the first thing you have to do is to create a free account on the developer.dolby.com website and then you can access to tons of resources that's very useful and you will be able to access to this page and where you can download the Dolby Atmos production suit, the trial version. And I recommend that you also download the music panner so we can have some fun with it later on. And once this is downloaded and installed, uh, you will have to get it ready uh, by going to the preferences and to set it up. Uh, by default, the audio driver uh, is set to send return plugins, which are to be used for Pro Tools and uh, Nuendo, maybe. Pro Tools, I'm sure, Nuendo, I don't know. Um, but for this example, we will use the core audio, uh, the basic uh, audio of the Mac. Uh, as the audio input device, because actually the Dolby Atmos renderer is, is a bit like a tape machine. It's a recording software. Uh, and so what's happening is that Reaper, or any other though, but Reaper for the time being, will feed the input uh, uh, to the software and the software will allow you to listen through it and also will when your your mix is final and you're ready to render it uh, then you won't render it inside the doll but you will have to record it through the dolby atmos renderer will which will actually generate the files uh, so this is why it needs an audio input and we will be using as we're on Macintosh, uh, Dolby Audio Bridge. And the equivalent for the moment, it's in development, but I understood that there are some bumps in the road with the, some limitations inside Windows that make it quite 
quite complicated to have it for Windows right now. It will come eventually, but for the moment it's only for the Mac. So the audio input has to be set to the Dolby Audio Bridge. Uh, and if you click on it, of course, you will have all the, the various interfaces that are connected to your Mac or virtual uh, ones. But the one to use is the Dolby Audio Bridge. Uh, for the audio output device, that is your interface. Mine is Emerging Technologies and it has eight outputs. <coughs> you will also need an external sync source uh, because as it's, it's, the software acts as an independent recording device, uh, it's best to have it synchronized with Reaper. Uh, it's not mandatory, but of course it's better if you have to render long programs like in, in music, it can be like in classical music, and then uh, have it, having it synced to the door allows you to punch in and out some sections uh, for the mix or if you have to revise your mix for some reason, maybe it's just a portion of your mix and if it's a long program, of course, it's better to be able to punch in and out and not to have to re-record it all the time. Um, so it's a good thing to have uh, synchronization and we will set it up and we will be using MIDI time code and not uh, audio time code. We don't need that for because it's it's all in the box. And the MIDI device for the MIDI time code, the best thing to do is to go to the audio and MIDI setup in the Mac and make sure that the AAC manager is actually turned on. This is the double click on the this icon and then it, it's this checkbox here to make sure that it is available. Uh, to the different softwares, which is the case here. Uh, then the rate is, uh, well, you can set uh, the rate, let's say that will be 19.29.97, uh, 48 kilohertz is fine. And uh, that's what the basic we have to set up here. The rest of the prefer preferences is you can leave the default the one thing that I recommend the headphone processing is not enabled by default and so you have to enable it uh, if you want to work with headphones and choose if your headphones are stereo or binaural and binaural is more fun so we can uh, set this up this way that's the f for the preferences the other things we have to do uh, is to also set up the room. This is something you have to do only once and it's the way to declare to let the software know which kind of speakers uh, you have connected to your audio interface. In my case for the moment it's still 5.1 uh, so uh, I've engaged the uh, left and right center subwoofer and surround speakers but of course if you have more than that you can set it up here and once you have selected the speakers configurations that you're actually using then you can uh, define the routing for it uh, my audio interface as i said has eight outputs the six first outputs are used for the surround the five plus one setup so i have in my case but yours will most likely be different. Uh, channels 1 and 2 goes to left and right front, 3 and 4 goes to the surround speakers, 5 goes to the center speaker and 6 goes to the LFE. But then again uh, this will be different for you maybe and my 7th and 8th outputs from my interface uh, are used to feed the headphones so I can have both at the same time. Uh, the Dolby Atmos renderer does this. It will render for 5 plus 1 uh, speakers and also for the binaural uh, rendering for my headphones. And then you can add various monitoring layouts. So in my case I've just set up the 5.1 which is my uh, main speaker layout and also of course to be able to listen in stereo but you can add as many as you wish depending upon what your actual configuration is. And this is all that there is to do for the Atmos rendering part. And then we can switch to Reaper. 
I have here, uh, here a new project and there are a few things that needs to be done in Reaper and first in the preferences of Reaper <coughs> and you have to set the audio device so to uh, the Dolby Audio Bridge, the same menu uh, than before, so that makes the uh, Reaper and uh, well the, the output of Reaper will feed the input of the Dolby software. And I recommend actually Dolby recommends <coughs> that the block size here uh, should be set to 1024 samples. That's the buffering and of course because Reaper uh, will output 64 channels to the Dolby Atmos renderer and so having a, a larger buffer than what you may use uh, normally is recommended. Another device that you have to set up is if it's not done already is make sure that the in the MIDI outputs the A AC bus is actually enabled so it's available for uh, Reaper. That's all that there is to do in Reaper preferences. Uh, so we can go to the master track and we have to set up our master uh, or routing to uh, let it know that by default Reaper has a two channel stereo master but we will set it up to its maximum which is 64 and of course we have also to make sure that all the 64 outputs are actually uh, output <coughs> and can feed uh, the Dolby Atmos renderer that's for the master track and finally we have to set up the synchronization and for this in Reaper it's very easy as everything in Reaper so let's call this track MTC for MIDI time code and once the track is selected we can use this insert menu to insert a time code generator uh, by default it will take the length of uh, the portion you have selected here but of course you can change the length to uh, make it match that of your program make sure that it's actually longer uh, than your program it's very important of course because if not well the time code will stop being generated and also by default when you insert a time code generator uh, Reaper makes it an audio time code generator but we don't need that we don't need audio so you have to right click and uh, I'll do it again maybe I didn't and select source properties and instead of audio it's MIDI time code uh, in the Dolby Atmos renderer we've set it up at a frame rate of 29.97 so make sure that it's the same here uh, so was that drop or non drop I can't remember <coughs> Uh, well, never mind. Uh, for the example, and hit apply, and um, that's it. Well, you can set the the start time if it's if it's different, but leave, let's leave it on zero for the moment. And okay, so now if I play uh, in Reaper, I I notice that nothing is happening. It's my fault of course you need to route that uh, and the MIDI output should be fed to the IAC bus and that's it and now when we play we can see that the Dolby Atmos renderer actually gets the timecode from uh, Reaper so and to do that you have to click on this if not it's it's on its internal clock and so because it, it acts as a player as well it's, it's a not only I said a recording device but it's also a playing device which means that if someone sends you uh, a Dolby Atmos encoded file such as those that we saw uh, for instance you could get some from this opencontent.netflix.com and uh, and so the files you can get from here uh, the Atmos ADM files you can actually open them and uh, the Dolby Atmos renderer will uh, act as a player for, for those files but uh, it's also a recording uh, device and if we want to have it synchronized to an external timecode 
then we have to click on this and that's all there is to do on the technical side everything is ready so now we can start playing with some audio uh, for instance let's say that i create this track here open the media manager let's get a loop of something not too um not too violent dub checker what is it hmm, fine okay uh so let's use this for instance uh, yes, please. <coughs> I can close the media window and put it from the start. Maybe have it all the way through. Um, and at the moment, so that's the stereo. That's, this is a stereo file, very basic, and it's rooted. Uh, it's a two-channel uh, track, and it's rooted to channels one and two, which, um, so if I play this, well, this is very loud, better this way, if I play this, I can see that it's feeding the first two channels of audio in the Dolby Atmos renderer, so that's great. Uh, the few, this first ten channels, which are uh, in purple here, uh, they are used by default for what Dolby calls beds, uh, which are basically multi-channel files, and there are 10 channels because the standard for Atmos is, uh, for the beds, is 7.1.2, uh, which makes 10 channels. And uh, for the moment, I'm only feeding the, the two channels here because this is stereo, but let's say that we want to make this uh, real 7.1.2. Well, that won't be a real one. It will be a fake one using a plugin. Uh, but there, there are many, many solutions to do this. And for instance, uh, Plugin Alliance um, distributes this Dia VR Pro, uh, which is a um, room simulator. And uh, in this uh, software, so what I have to do now is to tell it that the output format is not two channels. For the moment, the, the plugin has two ins and two outs, but I'm not interested in this. So I want to change my track routing uh, to tell it to use 10 channels instead of two. And in the plugin, I can tell it that I want the output to be 7.1.2, which is here. And so when I play now the track, I can notice that the 10 channels uh, are fed. Uh, not the fourth one, because, well, that must be the setting of this. So I can start moving around in this virtual uh, fake environment. And uh, I can now see that I do have my 10 channels that are fed. Um, I'm currently listening here in my monitoring is uh, 2.0. I've done this for the video because that's what's actually feeding the sound for this video. But of course, I would normally in mixing conditions uh, use my 5.1 monitoring uh, setup. Uh, but I'm leaving it here on 2.0 for the video. So this is for a bed, so let's say you can prepare from some music and have it here. And on top of that, if we want to play with uh, the other uh, audio stream that is known to Atmos, which are the objects, so you can create as many beds as you want and organize that inside the renderer software, but I won't go into this now, that's not the purpose of this video. Um, and the rest, let's use, let's create an object and automate it. Uh, so I can create a new track, and this will be my, uh, say, object uh, object one. And uh, <coughs> this track, I will uh, assign it. So as you can see, uh, of course, the, the Atmos uh, can handle up to 128 channels, but as we've seen, uh, Reaper will only output 64 of them. Um, and so let's we see that I have one bed, so it's using channels 1 through 10. So I will use the channel 11 for this track because that's an object. Um, and uh, so I will leave it on two channels. That will be 11 and 12, actually. Uh, 
I think maybe I can short no not here uh, let's say 11 and 12 and let's um, grab another uh, maybe um, do we have a tambourine uh, for instance not just a percussion uh, yeah that will do okay and so let's say that I have here my tambourine here I'll make it not too loud and for this as it's an object we will use uh, the Dolby uh, music panner here which is a VST plugin that uh, you can find also here on the Dolby Atmos music panner on the same website uh, this is a free plugin and so I will tell it that my object pair is channels 11 and 12 and here I need to set that to parent channels 11 and 12 and so if I play it now I can see that those two objects have been created here and they appear here on this virtual environment and then the fun thing uh, that's where the fun begins because you can start uh, moving uh, that around of course and there's this very nifty sequencer uh, and that will let you uh, draw there's edit button and you can draw let's say that I just wanted to uh, circle like around here and so when I hit play oh, sorry it's done uh, that's a bit quick and uh, let's so slowly it can go around and I can see in the Dolby Atmos renderer that it's actually moving and we're listening to it in the stereo but of course your uh, listening environment that you have set up before will um, act accordingly so this is it this is the very basic so from then on it's up to you uh, one thing I forgot to mention I'm just realizing now that of course uh, since we have set up the master track routing to 64 channels make sure that you have disabled anything that you might have on the monitor fx uh, of reaper because of course if there are plugins enabled in there uh, they will um, influence uh, the two at least the two first channels and that that will make your mix sound very weird uh, so make sure that the monitor fx is uh, turned off in a reaper uh, that's about it so if you have any questions comments everything is welcome in the comments below the video and um, make sure to try this because this this is real fun uh, to do and as I said even if you don't have a proper listening environment which is my case with my 5 plus 1 uh, you can still have fun and even with headphones and binaural also uh, if you're interested in do in immersive audio and the next generation audio as it's called because it has many many benefits and it's quite very likely that in the near future in the years to come uh, broadcasters of all kind will want this for their audience because it has many benefits beyond uh, simple uh, having fun with immersive audio is uh, they're also uh, used in terms of intelligibility and accessibility of audio comments and um, that the, the public may uh, have an influence of the way they want to listen to uh, any uh, any kind of program including music of course uh, for the moment as you may know there are already Tidal and Amazon Music are uh, streaming uh, Dolby Atmos content and um, there are many devices that allow it to play like uh, latest uh, Apple smartphones, Samsung smartphones, uh, OnePlus smartphones and many more um, so this is really something that in my opinion is worth getting into so well have fun and uh, let me know how it goes thank you for listening and see you soon Bye.